have secret. And that secret is shared, and like most secrets, bears an enormous amount of And increasingly over time, those secrets tend to bear more. So after a period of time, I decided that I would refer back to the person who shared the secret. And we decided that it was probably the time that the secret is revealed. And that we should stop the person, and we should stop those things holding us back. And we decided that I should be that person to share the secret. But before I go in and spend a little bit more time exactly on the secret that I think many of you also in this room may share, and we certainly know some others who may share it as well, I want to put the story, my story, in a little bit of context. As Kevin said, I grew up in a small Pennsylvania town, roughly about 7,000 people. My parents originally from Bundaberg, my dad was a vascular surgeon. He did his residency in Melbourne, where I was born, thus the accent, if you're confused. But at a pretty young age, we had the chance to go to the United States for a year, and the stories tend to go, we stayed here for nearly 20 years. And growing up in an idea of country town, there's many of those same traits and characteristics that are found in this room, and not in many other rural communities, that I genuinely believe the strength and the essence and the foundation of successful communities. Many of these things which we have moved away from over a period of time. And part of that growing up and part of that experience in the United States was ideal. I came from probably one of the least dysfunctional, yet still dysfunctional families. We had our own trials, we had our own tribulations, and we moved from town to town, country to country. Certainly put some effort and some emphasis on the importance of a core family unit. And while my dad spent huge amounts of time, obviously as a surgeon, to and fro from the medical center, my mother became, and still to this day, one of the most important and strong characters that I can relate to. I take great pride in saying I'm actually half male and half female. With a strong mother and three beautiful, strong sisters, I learned that there are things that we often attach and stereotypes that we put upon ourselves that are, in fact, a weight and a burden, which is causing great harm. And even as I went through and grew up in a, a small United States town, oddly enough, and a father who had the responsibility to teach me about gridiron and baseball and athletics and basketball. My father grew up playing cricket in rugby union. So you can see that the, even from the very early stages, there was a disconnect between me and my father. Many times we think that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And in my case, I probably couldn't have fallen further from the tree. I'd been through a variety of roles once I left the United States and came back, to the, came back to Australia with my parents, and Dad decided to move back to Bundaberg. And I, too, after a pretty successful college career and graduating with my university degree, decided I'd come back to the country where I was born. I went back to school and got my teaching degree. Spent some of the most important and passionate years of my life training young men, 16 to 17-year-olds in Brisbane. Still to this day, one of the most profound impacts that I have had or experiences that I have had in my life. One, so powerful that it is the area that I will pursue with great passion once I can afford to raise my three children the way I'd like, and my wife, of course. And again, without her contributions to my life and to my existence, many paths may have been taken alternate to where I find myself now. But in growing up and spending a huge amount of time in the United States and then subsequently moving back here, over a period of time, I think the older I get, the, father, the smarter my father becomes. That some of those critical lessons that are passed on, particularly to young boys who grow into be young men, are the foundations that will put us in good stead moving forward. But unfortunately, what we've all experienced over the last decade and the rise of technology and the per pervasiveness of media is that it is becoming overwhelming. Overwhelming to the point where mass media often portrays men more than 75% of time in one of four lights, as a villain, as an aggressor, 
as a pervert or as a philanderer. I am none of those things. And the people in this room, the people that you know, your husbands, your fathers, your grandfathers, your sons, and the impact they're going to have on our daughters is of vital importance. You turn on a television, and whether it's the advertisements or the TV programs or the movies, men are portrayed in one of six categories. We're the superhero. And how will I envy someone that can stand there and feel that power inside them to stand there and say that I am Superman. Growing up, spending time in the United States, having a strong family relationship, the critical factors that I learned to deal with or to focus on to judge myself as men do, we measure ourselves. We hold ourselves against the criteria in which the modern media puts out and stereotypes. And the challenge is to identify which ones still remain true, which ones still bear weight, which ones are still going to make a difference, and which ones do we need to acquiesce to. Put our hands in the air and say, this is the way it's going to go. My father would say I grew up in a different time, in a different place than he did. And my sons and my daughters are going to say the same thing. But at the same time, those traits and stereotypes and characteristics that I found of immense value to me, the idea to perform, the idea for men to protect, and also for men to be the providers in their family, is undergoing a shift and a change. And it's under attack. And while this media, combined with our own existing stereotypes, is both uplifting and provides so many opportunities and the teachers and the principals who are incorporating it into our everyday lives, there is no doubt whatsoever that the power and the importance of technology can't be underestimated. But you see, part of the attacks are also coming from within. Some of us are being hit by friendly fire from those closest to us. And is it any wonder Henry David Thoreau talked about the importance and the power that most men lead a life of quiet desperation and that far too many, far too many are dying with that song inside them. And as we look at these things, is it any wonder that we are concerned about the future, not only of this country, the future and the importance of small towns and small communities as the backbone See, the great thing about rural towns, small towns, is closeness and communication and cohesion. You are all bound together by your isolation. And while some of these things are the strengths of communities, particularly rural communities, as we all know, many of our strengths are also part of our weakness. Why is this a concern? It's a concern because the numbers don't lie. More men in this country choose a destination or a result that is finite at twice the rate of those people in this country that are killed in automobile accidents. And obviously I'm a little bit prone to the male way of doing things and the male psyche, something I'm most comfortable with. I wanted to share some of these statistics not only to make you aware possibly that you are not alone, but also at the same time to take some of those steps forward and determine what those courses of action are. Throughout today and through the remainder of today, you will hear about the resiliency required to live life. And in some ways, I stand here holding my secret embarrassed. Not embarrassed for the secret that I hold, but embarrassed that my secret has done to me in light of what the world has provided that when presented with other struggles and trials and tribulations that many people in this room and certainly many people around the world go through, seem to pale in comparison. Who are you to stand up here and complain and to worry and to bother? Because remember, Nick, keep your chin up. Big boys don't cry. She'll be right. Men are four times more likely to suicide than women. It's a leading cause of death in males between 15 and 44. 
There are 249 people today in this country that are making a plan to bring it to an end. It's 249 fathers, grandfathers, husbands, and brothers who through the combination of our own enforced stereotypes of what we do, but also the contributions that media are making to our lives every single day. I remember as a young kid living in this country and turning on or, okay, my mom's watching, coming home late at night, <laughs> and turning on the ABC and watching Rage. Any of you grew up or familiar with Rage? Rage! And much to my chagrin, it was a couple of years ago when I turned on the TV, and I thought I may have accidentally hacked into my neighbor's online account. Because what was paraded before me and to my wife was, in short, pornographic and violent. And portraying men and women, because it's important to understand that as I talk about this from a male perspective, it is not an exclusion for what women and their stereotypes are also going through. We want to lift women up. We want to provide them every opportunity to share with them how important and how valuable they are to contributing to who we are as individuals. But it's been at the demise of men. And men as strong and brave as we are, or portrayed to be, we share the same weaknesses, the same concerns, the same doubts, the same worries, the same hesitations. And yet if you see a woman crying, it's okay to be expected. But to see a man cry, that's something entirely different, all the more powerful. I think I've seen my father quite cry twice. One, probably the best joke I've ever delivered. And secondly, at the funeral of his son-in-law. But my growing up, around the performance, providing for your family, and also delivering on the security is something that I carry with me and measure against myself every single day. Those of you in the building trade, measure twice, cut once. And as this goes through, it's important to understand that while we talk about big boys don't cry, and some of those stereotypes that we put on ourselves are placing men in harm's way. Who talks better? Who communicates better, more effectively? Comes easy, comes naturally. Men, women. Women, stereotypically. I might be an exception to the rule, but as I said, I'm half female. And when we deal every single day with some of these messages and these conversations that we have in our head, it's important to understand and know and probably the best time for me to introduce it to you now, is that for the most part, my secret has been a lie. Four and a half years ago, I was diagnosed with mental illness. And through all of my time and growing up and spending, I was a high school quarterback, I had an opportunity to go to the United States. Hell, I even sat on the top of a car with a sunroof and went down the main street as the head of a parade. That doesn't happen every day only in America, small country town. I think it's important in me sharing this secret with you to know that some of the traditional stereotypes that you may see of others is in fact not who they are. And part of my frustrations and angst comes from, I'd spent a lot of time public speaking, coaching, training. I've spent years doing it. And I stand up in front of people and I encourage them to, to take another step, to fight another day that you are better than you believe. And yet every single day I would go home and drive home and think to myself, you're a liar, you're a hypocrite. And it's a bloody good thing that these people don't know how you actually feel, because if they did, they might not come back tomorrow. And maybe in a little sick and twisted way, this is my way of dealing and managing with it. You see, I can stand in front of hundreds and thousands, but you'll also know if any of you were paying attention, I'm also the same guy that sits in the back of the room because I'm not comfortable being the center of attention. Go figure. But as it relates to why we're here today, that there are some increased risk factors
that I want everyone to be aware of and to understand in this room. And some of those factors are as follows. First of all, a rural location. Access to firearms, lack of social services, social isolation, and the expectations of the stereotypes that we were meant to live. Those of our fathers and our grandfathers, particularly in these areas, when your businesses and your farms are based upon generations. But I also need to tell you that while in some instances you can't see the forest for the trees, that both the trees and the forest are both still there. And while the view of this might appear to be a little bit doom and gloom, is it that there is also light. And sometimes that light is a pinprick in a dark black blanket. And that my nightmares that used to start when I woke up now start when I go to sleep. A few things that I want you to be aware of. Signs of depression and mental illness. Withdrawn from friendships or groups. Poor sleeping habits. Struggle to concentrate. Stop being productive at work. I need all of you in this room to have the tough conversations. And when it comes to the differences between women and men, we know that understanding, or generally understanding, women want to understand. Guys, on the other hand, we just want to know what to do. And here's what I need you to do with some of the men in your life. And women, we don't like sharing feelings. Ask them on a scale of one to 10. One, this is the worst time in my life. In 10, I'm so happy, I feel like the Dalai Lama. Ask them to give you a number. If it's less than four, or four or less, you need to offer help and assistance. Go online, there's no shortage of opportunities and places that you can go to get the right information, to get the right advice and help. But above all else, although we've spent a lot of time talking about big boys don't cry, I think it's very important that we take away the message, but men do. Thank you. Thank you very much.